Job 22. Then Eliphaz the team might answer and say, one of these guys going to shut up. And Job has told him every time he's spoken, I don't want to hear from you. Last time Job, he says, mock on chapter 21, verse 3. Can a man be profitable unto God? And remember, this is all aimed at Job. And remember, there's doctrinal truth in these three men and Job. But it's not truth against Job. So, Job, who do you think you are? I mean, can God use you? As he that is wise may be profitable unto himself. In a way, yeah, a man can be profitable on God. If a man will do what God tells him to do and properly do it, there are people that are saved because God sends them out in the world to preach the gospel. And what is the prophet? People get saved. At the God don't use angels. Cornelius sees an angel. The Catholic sees an angel. The angel says, go get Peter. And it looks like the people of the family of Cornelius and his friends and his, and his associates get saved. And the prophet of God goes to the prophet of us because he gives us crown and rewards. So, yeah, a man can be profitable to God when he obeys God. But it's not our merit, it's the merit of Jesus Christ. Is it any pleasure to the Almighty that thou art righteous? What happened in chapter 1 and chapter 2? The devil comes up to God and God says, hey, see my servant Job, and God doesn't brag, God doesn't boast, and God has no pride. You see the well done that Job's doing? The Job was, Job's like, yeah, right, come on. What about for the Christian? If we do right, and we, we do what God wants us to do in the pleasure, what would God say? Well done. What was the pleasure of the father of the parable son? That son's coming home. That rickety, rickety, filthy boy is coming home. Wraps his arms around him. That's God's pleasure. What, what happens when somebody gets saved, the Bible says, the angels in heaven rejoice. And all our loved ones that are in heaven today get to see that rejoicing. And probably join in the rejoicing. And more so if it's, it's a family member. So we can be a... Pleasure to God is when we live right and do right and confess our sins. That pleases God. That thou art righteous. Well, if we're righteous, Job, we make God happy. And the devil doesn't win when he comes up before God, the accuser of the brethren. When God can say, hey, devil, you see what you did to him? And you see that he held his integrity? It's a shame when God has to tell the devil, oh yeah, I know. Oh. Oh. That's where we have the mediator and that's where we have our advocate. Gee, Father, the devil's right, but it's under the blood. Satan, get, get, I don't see anything. Or is it a gain to him, God, that thou makest thyself perfect? No man makes himself perfect. And Job never said he was perfect. Job never said he was righteous. Matter of fact, Job said, I'm, I, I'm guilty, I have iniquity, I've sinned, Lord help me. You guys have been throwing the wickedness at him. You guys have been claiming he's going to hell. You guys are claiming the wickedness is why he lost everything. And Job's only saying, listen, this is what the wicked man is. Will God, he... Reprove thee for the fear of thee. Job did not fear thee himself. Job said, I fear that was come upon me. This has been my lifelong fear. And he's been blaming God. Will he, God, enter with thee, Job, into judgment? I mean, are you going to be there with God sitting with the judge? Is not thy wickedness great? Oh, get that? Who's he talking to, Job? 
Job, you're a wicked sinner. That's that Pharisee. You know, he's he, he's he's got the knee bowed. He said, Lord God, I'm not I'm glad I'm not that is that guy over there. I look how great I am. He, I, I don't do the things he does. That's exactly what Eliphaz is doing. You see what Job is doing, God? You see how great I am? Job, I haven't lost everything. Job, I'm not sitting here with boils. You've got to be wicked. And thine Job iniquities, infinite. That's the first time that word shows up, infinite. Job, we can't even name your iniquities. How about all those times you spoke so far, Eliphaz? For thou, Job, has taken a pledge from thy brother for naught. Now, what he's going to have is full accusations against Job. And we'll pick up what Job is and what he does. But, Job, you stole a pledge. A pledge is something is you leave for collateral. And he's saying you stole a collateral for naught. You took that pledge for nothing. And stripped the naked of their clothing. Job, you made people naked. Now I'm telling you, the United States government and the, and the big corporations of America and the world have made people naked. And have made the pledges for naught. Have taken the wealth from, from the poor people. We'll learn about Job later. But these are all false accusations. Thou hast not given water to the weary to drink. You wouldn't even give a cup full of water. Well, let me ask you, what's Eliphaz doing for Job's condition? What has he done to help Job, who's there medically misfit, he's had everything taken away from him, he's had deaths in his family, his wife has left him. What has Eliphaz done to throw an accusation? You're no better, Eliphaz. Thou has withhold bread from the hungry. People are hungry, you didn't give them bread. But as for the mighty man, he had the earth. Now, I don't know if he's talking about Nimrod, Genesis 10, 8. Remember, we're not far from that period of time in Genesis. We're at the grandchildren of uh, uh, Esau. And the honorable man dwelt in it. I don't know what he's referencing here. Thou, Job, has sent widows away empty. So chapter, verse 8 is a little P.S. I don't know what the P.S. is. But we're going back. Job, and now remember, Job was a, was a man that sat in the gate as a judge. And Eliphaz is saying, there's a widow that came to you, and you went against her, and you sent her away with nothing and a loss. And the arms of the father, this had been broken. When a man had no father to help his family, and he came to you for help, you broke him. Therefore snares, traps, are round about thee, and sudden fear troubles thee. Now remember, Job said, I, I fear has come upon me. You know why you got that fear, Job? Because you're wicked, you're violent, and you help nobody. Now, we don't have the time, but we can go back to Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2 again. And I advise you to go back, read Job 1 and 2. Is it because of the sins of Job? Absolutely not. Because Job was righteous. Job is skewed evil. Job was pleasing in God's eye. That's why he ended up in the condition he is. Now, he has self-righteous. Eliphaz has hit the ball out of the park. The problem is the ball is a football. You don't use a football and baseball. Eliphaz is in the wrong game. The wrong equipment. Or darkness that thou, Job, canst not see, an abundance of waters cover thee. A flood. Job, you're drowning in death. That's where the expression comes from. You know why? Because you're evil. You're wicked. You're reaping what you're sowing, Job. You don't want to take care of others? God's not taking care of you. That's the prosperity gospel right there. People believe that today. If you help the homeless, God will allow you into his heavenly kingdom forever. How great thou I am. 
in Joe approximately BC 1520. You don't take care of people. You don't help the world. You don't be good. You're not doing good. You're not a good person. So you'll get evil and wickedness. Is not God in the height of heaven? Yes. Okay. And behold the height of the stars. How high are they? Pretty far away. And this is man is listen, there's no earthly pollution. When they look at those stars, they see a lot more stars than what we see. Right? The pollution. And thou, Job, saith, How does God know? He God judged through the dark. Wow. You know, he's claiming, Job, you know what you're saying? God can't see me. He never seen, he never said such a thing. Matter of fact, I think he's one of the other guys that said that. Thick clouds are a covering to him, God, that he seeth not, and he walketh in the circuit of heaven. Now, if Job has made any implication as such, Job's implication is, Lord, will you show me my sin? Lord, will you show me the iniquity? Lord, will you show me why I am in a condition I am? Because I need to know, and he's not claiming anything that God can't see me. Again, run back to Job 1 and 2. God sees everything. Eliphaz is the one that's blind. So mark God as high as he can, but he can. That's what people believe today. People believe they go about their sin, they live in their wickedness, and they say, oh, because God can't see. God allows it. Sentence against an evil work, Ecclesiastes, or people who say there is no God. All is well, there's no God. Second like what Eliphaz is saying. But there is a God. There's coming a day. There's coming a judgment day, and they will give an answer. Has thou marked the old way, which wicked men have tried it? Guess who the wicked man is? Job, you are following the ways of the wicked. Why don't you just shut up? <laughs> Go on. Now that's true for a wicked man. Wicked men have gone the old way of what? Cain. Cain had a religion. Religion's run about today. I bring the fruit of my labor. Religion brings the fruit of their labor. Look what I can do. God, look what I can do. And Abel brought the blood, and who, who really bring, brings the blood? Very few churches today have the blood of Jesus. Which were cut down out of time. Wicked have died, gone. Whose foundation was overflown with a flood. I'm going to assume that that's Noah's blood. And I'm going to assume that verse 8 is Nimrod. And with the assumption I could be wrong. You know what Eliphaz, and I could be wrong, but the implication, if this is it, Eliphaz said, all the world was judged during the flood, Job. And you would be gone. You would be dead. God would have not spared you in that ark if you were there, Job. Man, that's just outright cruel. First of all, it's wrong. For Job, the wicked men will, will die. Which say unto God, and we've already read this before, depart from us. That's what Job said. Job said it about the wicked man. His, his children are wonderful. His calves make more calves and his animals make more animals and Job's are dead. Depart from us. And what can the Almighty do for them? And that's already been quoted back in a um, couple of verses back. But they are listening to each other. Yet he, God, fills their houses with good things. But the counsel of the wicked is far from me. Eliphaz. Job, you had the good things. Now they're gone. Why are they gone? Because you're wicked. And what am I listening? Joab, I mean not Joab, uh, Eliphaz, me. What wicked counsel would he be listening to? Job. He's saying, Job, all the counsel that I've heard with my ears, it's wicked, and that's you, Job. The righteous see it and are glad. 
and the innocent laugh them to scorn. You know, when the wicked fall, God shall laugh, the Bible says. Whereas our substance, who's the are, is not cut down. Who's the one in the group of people right now that have not had their substance stolen, killed, burnt up? Job, you see the three of us? We're not like you. Now, isn't that cruel? And I guarantee this has probably happened to Christians all around the world. I can imagine the worst thing would happen, here's a mother who's lost a baby. And these three idiots come up and it's all your fault you lost that baby. You say, that's cruel. Isn't that cruel what they're doing to Job? It's all your fault, Job. It is not always their fault. Job 1 and 2, we don't know whose fault it is most of the time. But the remnant of them, the fire consuming. I don't know if it's talking about the fire that come down from, from the heaven, the fire of hell. Or... A quaint. That's the only time that word shows up. Now thyself with him, God. Job, you better get to know God. <laughs> better get to know God. Because you're in trouble. And be at peace. You know the people that come up to us our street ministry, you don't know God. That's not what the Bible says. That's not what Jesus would do. You don't know God. You don't know the, the scriptures. You have not studied and read the scriptures. Job talked with God. We saw that in Genesis 1 and 2. Job, just in case his children did wrong, he offered a sacrifice for his children and God accepted it. You know what family Eliphaz comes from? He comes from, a, from his father that, oh, give me a mess of beans and I'll sell my birthright out to you and now I'm going to kill you. Once our dad is dead, I'm going to kill you. That's the family Eliphaz. Eliphaz and his family hate the Jews and God said, you better bless that Jew. Acquaint thyself with him and be at peace. Therefore, thereby good shall come unto the prosperity. So if you get right with God, everything in your life will get right. That cancer will go away. Your problems will go out the window. And that's one church sign that we see on the way to church. If you just give it to Jesus, he'll hit the reset button. Absolutely hogwash, stupidity, in the light of the scene, church age we are in. Throw away your church signs. They're not giving glory to God. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And I have lost jobs and I've been kicked out of churches because I took the scriptural view and they didn't. And don't tell me if you get right with God, everything be hunky-dory. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth. There is no law. At least Exodus 20, 21 and uh, Leviticus and Deuteronomy. But there is a law. When, when Noah came out that ark, God said you can eat anything you want. And you got a religion of vegging today. Can't eat meat. God said you can. Well, you can't eat pork, and you can't eat this, and you can't eat... God said that to the Jew, not to the Gentile. Paul says we can eat whatever we want. We can bow our heads and say, Thank you, Lord. If it doesn't bother our tummy, yell me, come and die. And also said when Noah came out of that ark, If a man or animal slays another man, his blood shall be shamed. Slain. Capital punish is before the law. We seem to abolish the, the, the uh, capital punishment today. Only few in between do we apply that in America. And then when other countries kill somebody who has committed a crime worthy of death, America gets all upset. Oh, how bad that nation is. They're doing what God told them to do. You're not doing what God told you to do. So there is a law. And we learned that law from... from uh, the life of Abraham, when, when someone had Sarah, he's like, you know, 
wait a minute, I was innocent. I didn't do any adultery. And there's certain reactions by the men in the Bible before the Exodus 20 that they had a account of the conscience of their heart that I'm not supposed to do this. I'm supposed to do this. Before any law was written. In our hearts today, we have a conscience that all over the world, you don't kill anybody. In the deepest, darkest regions of the sunniest, bright deserts of the world, in that tribal forest, there is a thing you do not commit. Murder. And they would not know the Bible or anything of the Bible. So lay up this word in thy heart. His word. There's no Bible. And yet God spoke to Job. And will speak again, by the way. If thou return to the Almighty, what's the implication there? You left God. Job, you're a backslider. Anything but the truth for Job. Thou shalt be built up, prosperity. Thou shalt put away thy iniquity far from thy tabernacles. And Job was asking God, what is my iniquity? Then, here comes prosperity gospel. Here it is. Then thou shalt lay up gold as dust, even the gold of offer, as the stones of the brook. Prosperity gospel. Here it is. You want to know where you find the prosperity gospel? You find a man that's against the nation of Israel, who doesn't know what he's talking about, has been proclaimed as a man of no wisdom, who is a quack, and who needs to shut up, and if you don't shut up, he's mocking. And if you get right with God, you'll get all kinds of gold. There it is. There's the prosperity gospel. And it is many, 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 many years before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And when Paul served God and got saved and did what God told him to do, he did not get gold. He did not get silver. He got whipped. He got stoned. He got shipwrecked. He got hungry. He got thirsty. He got plenty of enemies. And his own Christian friends became his enemies. And when you go about the prosperity gospel, you are in the wrong dispensation. You're in the Old Testament. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense. And thou shalt have plenty of silver. Prosperity. So if God will be your defense in the church age. Why do we have a volumes of uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs? Why are there volumes and volumes of martyrs mirror? Where men and women died for the word of God. Why is there coming up a time in the tribulation period people are going to be beheaded for the word? To be absent from the body and present with the Lord. But when... I have an enemy who does not want the gospel to be preached and who does not want people to hear the gospel as though I, I don't pray against the soul of that person, but I pray for his musical instrument. I pray, Lord God, send fire and lightning down to blow up the amplifier. It hasn't happened yet. Am I not right preaching the gospel? Should not God call down fire upon that electrical equipment? No. And if I believe that God would, I'm in the wrong dispensation. I'm to pray to love my enemies. For then shalt thou, Job, have joy in the delight of the Almighty, and shalt lift up thy face unto God. You know what God enjoys today by what Paul wrote us, the church aid? When we go out and preach the gospel, when we pray without ceasing, we rejoice evermore, we quench not the Spirit, we... Those are the things God rejoices. For thou shalt have the delight of the Almighty and shalt lift up thy face unto God. That's kind of boasting because when Jesus said there were two men, the man that was right said he would not even lift his head to heaven, smoke his chest, said, Lord God, be merciful to, this, to me, a sinner. You lift up your head to God. Hi, God. How you doing? Look how great I am. I think that's got all wrong. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, 
and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vow. Oh, yeah, God hears us. And the Bible says you're not to make vows. You're not to make oaths. You're not to say, Lord, live it, or I will do. We're not to do those things. Because we may not be able, capable of doing it. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy way. Look at that. There's name it, claim it. Go ahead, God. I mean, Job. Claim God. Do it by God, and it will happen. Prosperity. By a man that has a deceitful message, who has lied about Job, who has accused Job falsely, but name it and claim it. And when people go about and have a public ministry, according to the scripture, these people like Eliphaz, you're doing it wrong, you're wrong, you're going to go to hell. How dare you judge me? How dare you? You don't know. I let my light shine. Wait a minute. Thou shalt make, uh, thou shalt make thy prayer unto them. He shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vow. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and shall establish unto thee. And the light shall shine. I let my light shine. There it is. There's a prosperity gospel of how great I am. Hallelujah to me. No, it's how great thou art. And how weak I am. It's the, it's the fact that the gospel is because I'm this sinner. The gospel is because I'm going to hell. The gospel is I believed on Jesus. The gospel is Jesus saved my soul. Not me. I'm a miserable pile of dirt. I don't even know how long the worms are going to feast on my body when I die. I'm not nothing. When men are cast down, then thou shalt say, There is a lifting up, and he shall save the humble person. He, God, shall deliver the island. That's the first time that word shows up, of innocent. I don't know any idea what that is. It is delivered by the pureness of thy hand. That's the only thing he said is right. Look how good my, look how clean my hands is. See my hands? I help the poor. I give to charities. I do, I do this, I do that. Look, look at Cain's hands with all the fruit. Look how great my hands. And God said, I don't want that. Yes, Abel? Lord God, the Father, I bring the blood. That's all I have is the blood. I take that. It's not my hands that saved me. It's the nail prints of the hands and the nail prints of the feet of Jesus Christ that saved me. Not me. Even the law. If you died in the law, you were right. You still went to Abraham's bosom. You didn't get out of Abraham's bosom until Jesus came out of that grave three days and three nights. You still needed the blood of the lamb. Abraham told Isaac long, 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 long before God should provide himself the lamb. Never our, it's never our salvation. It's never our work. Eliphaz, shut up. Go on. 